Diving right into the program, once you enter your login information, you'll be taken to this screen. From here, you can create a new scribe, open a scribe you've saved to the cloud, or work on a scribe you have already saved on your computer. To import .scribe files through your scribe's own file format, you can do so by clicking on the file looking icon at the bottom right of this screen and navigating to the file. Also, anytime you save your project as a .scribe file, you can open it on any computer that has VideoScribe installed to edit it. All of your images and audio that you've used for that project are packed into the .scribe file, so you don't have to worry about losing images you've used, which is a great feature to have. The other way to save your project is by saving it to the cloud. This means that your project is saved directly to VideoScribe servers. If you save a project to the cloud, you can access and edit it on any computer with an internet connection that has VideoScribe installed. You can see all of your saved cloud projects by clicking on the cloud icon on the projects window. Or you can go to your profile on VideoScribe's website and download it straight from there. Cloud storage is a great option for those who work on multiple computers frequently and don't like to manually store files on a USB drive. Continuing down the line, we have the default settings icon. I changed my default transition time to 0.5 because one second is just too long in between each object. Default pause time modifies how long of a gap there is between drawing your object and starting the next one. 0.5 is fine. And I changed my default max draw time to 5 seconds because unless you hand drew the image being drawn, most people won't be interested in watching a normal vector image for more than 5 seconds. Default image quality affects bitmap images like JPEGs and PNGs that you add to your project. 800 pixels is fine unless you plan on bringing in a bunch of high resolution images or pictures frequently. You can also access your VideoScribe account by clicking on the account button where you can see your subscription, affiliate information, and profile details. Lastly, there's a question mark icon which takes you to the VideoScribe help website where you can watch tutorial videos and get support for any problems you may encounter. I've contacted support a couple of times, mostly to try to get them to add features that I wanted, and they always responded within a day or two. That pretty much covers this screen. In the next video, we'll talk about the main project window and how VideoScribe differs from other video creation programs. See you there.